Hey, have you ever wanted to decode polyrhythms, but maybe you didn't know who to ask or where to go? Well, you've come to the right place and the right guy. Why? Haven't you heard? They call me Polyrhythmic. I'm the king of a complex. When I play the mic, percussion. I No? No one? Fine. Roll the video! Hey everyone, Pete Gallia here. Thanks so much for uh, checking out this video. Now today, I'm gonna be combining two of the things I love the very most, excluding tea, of course. And today, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit about decoding polyrhythms using kashakas. Now, what are kashakas? Kashakas are... These things, now they have loads of different names, Asalato, Aslatua, Banakula, Televi, uh, Kashaka, Koshkash, Keskes, Kaskas, probably a few more I'm forgetting, but the point is they're cool and that's what matters the most. Now, it's an instrument that comes from West Africa and um, this is actually like a kind of modernized version of it made of plastic, so it's a little bit more durable. But anyways, um, we're going to be using this amazing instrument to decode polyrhythms. Now, first and foremost, what is a polyrhythm? So, let's go to Wikipedia to find out. Get this. Polyrhythm is the simultaneous use of two or more rhythms that are not readily perceived as deriving from one another or as simple manifestations of the same meter. The rhythmic layers may be the basis of an entire piece of music or a momentary section polyrhythms. So, if we had to dumb it down, make it super easy and accessible to understand, polyrhythms, just imagine a space of time which is divided in more than one way, in half, in thirds, in quarters, fifths, whatever it is. The point is you're filling a particular space of time with more than one distance. Now, why even study this in the first place? I'm a little biased. I'm a big rhythm nerd. I love everything to do with rhythm. But besides, you know, just being able to impress your friends at the party, saying, hey, look, I can play a five against seven. It's just uh, something really helpful to know first and foremost. And I would say this is uh, one of the bigger reasons is to create depth in your perception of music, you know, to be able to become a little bit more independent from certain rhythmic structures which you might be a little bit more used to. Of course, besides this, the benefit of being able to understand polyrhythms is just to really fine-tune your inner clock and your sense of time and rhythm, to even be able to take a simple groove or a simple phrase, whatever it is you're working on, and just change the spacing, change the feel of it just a little bit, and this is something that can really help for your general rhythmic perception. So let's just jump straight in and learn a few polyrhythms. I've got my uh, trusty shakers over here and they're gonna help us out. So, a quick explanation. The main thing you need to bear in mind is that whatever polyrhythm you're playing, two against three, three against four, four against five, three against five, five against seven, anything you wanna work with, it's just simple maths. Just think, I've got these two numbers and I need to know how much time and space that they can fit into, right? So let's start super simple, really easy. It's really nothing to get confused about. We're gonna take two and three. Now, two can be considered eighth notes, three can be considered eighth note triplets, but as far as note values go, we can think about that a little bit later. Let's just focus a little bit on the spacing of things and how it all fits together, basically. So if we took two and three, what number do they fit into? Easy, six. So essentially, if you had to have a baseline pulse or subdivision that adds up to six, you can divide it into two groups of three or three groups of two. Now, super important part. What I'm about to tell you is something that I got wrong for quite a long time. So I'm just gonna make it clear here because as many people as I've studied with, uh, all the resources I found online, not many people necessarily outline this. The side of the polyrhythm that's going to play groupings of three is the two side. 
and the side that's gonna play the groupings of two is the three side. Why? Because polyrhythms are all about how many beats fit against each other, not groupings. That's a whole different concept. Similar stuff, you know, it, it really involves the same kind of concepts and uh, applications on the drum kit or whatever instrument you play. It's all the same, really. I just thought that I would outline that a little bit now. So let's get to it with the kashakas. Now, the cool thing about this instrument is that not only is it a shaker, everyone loves shakers, come on. It also involves certain movements and uh, certain little tricks, I suppose, which you can use to achieve accents over certain subdivisions. So let's make it super simple and outline all of this for you right now. So take this as our basic subdivision, say 16 notes or whatever. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Right? Now, I can do this. Right? Let's take this as our subdivision of two. Taka 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 ta. Now I like to use. Konakol, which is a system of Indian recitation of particular syllables that relate to rhythms, but you can count it any way you like using one e and a, I like to use Konakol, whatever, do what you want. The point is we get to the result, right? So moving on, we've got twos. We've also got threes. Now this trick I believe is called a flip-flop. This allows us to play accents over groups of threes. Check it out. So one, two, three, four. Or one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So let's move on. Now we can do another trick, which is called an air turn, to get groupings of four. One, two, three, four. Takademi, 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 takademi. Or one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. Moving on to fives. One, two, here we go. Or Or Hippopotamus, 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 Hippopotamus Or University, 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 University Whatever. Point is, they're groupings of fives. And last but not least, we're just gonna look at sevens. So same concept, I'm just gonna twist the, the kashaka, rotate it in midair one extra time, and that gives us two more little subdivisions for seven. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Or Now with regards more westernized ways of counting seven or whatever, I suppose you can count. Or listen to the radio, listen to the radio, listen to the radio, listen to the radio. Stole that one from Benny Greb. Anyway, guys, the point is if you're able to play these different groupings, let's start putting them against each other. Or not putting them against each other, they're not gonna fight. But let's uh, allow them to live peacefully together. Okay? Yeah, I like that one a little bit more. Let's do it. So, dear viewer on the other side of the internet, it's polyrhythm time. 
So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play a two against three to start, okay? So the two side is gonna be playing groups of three to create two beats within a context of six, and the three side is gonna be playing three groups of two. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One two three 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 one two 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 So there we had two against three. And you might say, okay dude, I don't have any kashaka, how can I practice this? Simple, grab some sticks or just your hands. Heck, let's just do it with our hands. You can snap our fingers. If you can't snap your fingers, then learn to snap your fingers. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe just, you know, hit a book and a desk. Point is, it's all the same. So if we have a subdivision of six, tuck it, 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 yeah? We're gonna play groupings of two on this side again and three on this side again. And the Two groupings gives us the three beat side, and the three groupings gives us the two beat side. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Here we go. Make sense? Maybe it actually sounds better if we use two sounds. So let's try this. See? Already makes me want to move. Okay, so that's two against three. Definitely the best place to start and um, the most common polyrhythm you're ever gonna use, I guarantee. But having said that, let's get into some more polyrhythms and the further we get, the less and less useful they're gonna be in everyday playing situations. Depending on the music that you play, obviously, but, you know, we're just doing this for fun. We're here to learn, so let's go for it. The next polyrhythm we're gonna check out is three over four, okay? Now, this is another super useful one. I would say two over three, three over two, whatever, or uh, three over four, four over three, are definitely the most useful ones that you're ever gonna encounter. So let's look at this one next, okay? So I'm going to be playing groupings of four on this hand to give us the three side and groupings of three on this side to give us the four. Now, in the case of three and four, obviously what's our underlying subdivision? We have a distance of 12 partials, 12 beats, whatever you want to call it. 12 little tiny micro time bits along the way before you hit the one again. So. Let's go for it. I'm going to be playing three over four with the three on this side and the four on this side. Here we go. One, two, three, and. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Okay? Now let's jam it for a little bit so you can feel it out. One, two, and here we go. Now, what we're gonna do next is apply it again to some body percussion. So, remember, in my opinion, the best way to understand and learn these polyrhythms is by the melody of them, rather than thinking about too much maths and too much counting. The easy way, in my opinion, and the most effective way is to go with the melody. So, let's do that right now. We've got the three side here, and the four side here. The three side, plays groups of four, and the four side plays groups of three. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So 
So if you take two different numbers, for example, this case, three and four, you're gonna put groupings of three on one side and groupings of four on the other side, which means 12 total subdivisions before they land back together on the one and the groupings of four give you three beats in that time and the groupings of three give you four beats in that time. So hopefully so far you're still with me and you've already begun to learn a little bit about one of my favorite concepts in music, polyrhythms. Of course, rhythm in general is incredibly fascinating. This is just one part of rhythm that I really love. Now moving on, it might be a little bit self-indulgent in a way, but you know what? It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it and I want to share it with you. So if you're up for it, let's go for some different combinations. So, so far we've seen how it sounds when you put two and three beats together. And we've also heard how it sounds with three and four beats put next to each other. So what about three and five? Okay, so now we're dealing with 15. Again, simple maths. We do some groupings in five, which gives us the three side, and we do some groupings in three, which gives us the five side. Okay, let's do it. Now using the groupings I showed you earlier, I'm gonna do exactly that. All right, check it out and have a listen. One, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, so I had the five side on this side and the three side on this side, which means the five side was playing groups of three and the three side was playing groups of five. Now, body percussion time. Okay. So we've got the five side. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and that's subdivided in triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a five and a one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a tuck it, 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 tuck it. Okay, we're gonna put some groupings of five over that. Here we go. Cool. So now I understand that this is the most detailed breakdown of everything, but we could literally spend a long time just doing two against three, three against two, you know, just the simplest one. You can do a thousand things with it. So my intention here is just to share my joy and my interest and passion about this with you. So of course, if there's any questions, anything that doesn't make sense, anything you wanna say or ask, please just leave a comment. I would be happy to respond and share with you what I know and maybe somebody else knows something I don't and we'll chime in and we can all have a nice conversation about rhythm and learn together and learn from each other. But moving on, we are gonna look now at four and five. Four and five fit into? That's right, 20. Good, I see we're paying attention, haha. -ha. So, trusty kashaka, let's do four over five. So, we're gonna play groupings of four on this side to give us the five beat side, and groupings of five on this side to give us the four beat side. Here we go. One. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Woohoo! I still remember the day I figured out four over five polyrhythm. I was still living in the UK in the second year of uni and I was washing the dishes. Or was I sweeping the floor? I think I might have been sweeping the floor. Point is, I was hearing something in my head. I was working a lot with quintuplets and fives at the time, obviously. 
and there was just something in my head begging to be heard. And I listened to it and I listened to it while I was cleaning up. And eventually I, I started to play something. I think I was tapping it on the counter and the handle of the oven or something. And when I figured out what it was, it was the four over five. So it's really amazing. Sometimes these musical ideas and concepts can present themselves to you. You don't even need to go out looking for them. If you're always engaged and involved with, with music, then sometimes the music will actually present itself to you. You just have to be open to it. So let's translate four and five to body percussion. We can take the five side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, which is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a five E and a takadimi, 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 takadimi. Five beats with four subdivisions. Okay, and over that same subdivision, we're gonna put groupings of five to give us the four side. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. Tati genata, 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 tati genata. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, don't go quiet on me. Why are you going quiet? My fingers stopped working. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that worked. That worked. If it goes quiet, lick your finger. It works. So anyway, moving on. We've looked at two and three, three and four, four and five, three and five. And now I'd just like to share one last one with you, which is one I've been working on a little bit recently myself, which is five and seven. Okay. Now, when we're dealing with five and seven, of course, our baseline subdivision or rhythmic length is 35 partials. So to get seven beats within that, you need to play groupings of five. And to get five beats within that, you need to play groupings of seven. It's so simple, right? Takes some time to get used to and to practice, but really, it's not that complicated at all. So, kashaka time! I'm gonna be playing groups of five on this side to give us the seven beat side, and groups of seven on this side to give us the five beat side. Here we go. That's, that wasn't supposed to happen. One moment. Okay, I'm gonna try not to drop it and break things this time. Here we go. I'm just gonna start with fives, make my life easier. Now I'm gonna throw a grouping of seven over this to give us our beautiful polyrhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Whew, that one's tough. So that one's still a little bit new to me, but hopefully it came out clearly as well. And one last time, it's time for body percussion. So, seven side, which is gonna be playing fives. Tadi genatum, 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 tadi genatum. Okay, awesome. So that's been a little bit of insight into my approach to understanding polyrhythms once again. Of course, we could go way more in depth and it's kind of hard to put as much detail as I really want to on the, the subject without making this video extremely long. And I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of uh, a brief insight into all of this. So, of course, there's much left to be said, which I'm sure I will cover in some other videos and I'm open to questions also. So if there's any questions you have, 
anything you don't understand, leave a comment. I'd be happy to share what I know and respond back to you. And maybe other people also will have a different point of view from mine, which might be easier for you to understand. So let's have a discussion down in the comments. Con let's connect and let's talk about these rhythms and uh, stay interested in these things and create beautiful music. So, one final recap before we call it a day. Let's kind of remind ourselves a little bit how this works. So, if you take the simplest one, two and three, then you're going to be dealing with six partials. If you divide the six into groupings of three, then you can fit two groupings within that amount of time. So that's your two side playing groupings of three. And the other hand will be playing groupings of two within the six, which gives you three beats within that same time. And on a final note, I just want to say that technically two over three and three over two are not the same thing, nor is five over seven the same thing as seven over five. But for me, what helps me most is to understand the melody of what's going on and how these different sounds fit together within a particular space. For me personally, that's the first step. Once all of that's in place, then I can understand, right, okay, how does this fit into five? How does this fit into seven? So if you're anything like me, hopefully this is a good starting place for you to get going with these kind of things. And it definitely will open up your mind and open up your ears to some degree about rhythm and take you somewhere new. All right, everyone, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions for further content on my channel, I'm super open. Please let me know what you're interested in. Let me know what you liked and what maybe I could improve on next time. Don't forget to click like if you dig it and hopefully also you'll want to subscribe to help me grow this channel bit by bit and spread music education and rhythm nerdery worldwide. And once again, I'd like to thank you for sticking through this video with me. I hope you learned something and I really hope to see you in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.